This is the My Campaign Coach Podcast, where we talk about how to win elections. Every week, we let you hear straight from the best consultants, operatives, and candidates in the game, all for one reason, to help you win. For more information about how we can help you win, visit MyCampaignCoach.com. Now, here's your host, Raj Schaefer. Hey guys, this is Raz, and I want to give a quick thank you and shout out to the folks that have been giving us positive reviews on iTunes and giving me direct feedback about the podcast. It is something that I've enjoyed doing, and getting feedback and ideas from you guys is a is a great thing. I, I absolutely love that. So thank you guys that have been doing that. Those of you that hadn't, I would love to hear from you. So reviews on iTunes, shoot me an email, contact me on Facebook, Twitter, any of that would be awesome. I'd love to get to talk to you guys outside the podcast and have it be more of a two-way conversation. And so I just want to give a quick shout out as we start here to say thank you. This week, we're going to do kind of a fun departure from our normal type of programming. Every week, I get a chance for the last 40 weeks, I've had the opportunity to interview some of the best consultants, candidates, and campaign staffers in the game. And I absolutely love it. It's been a lot of fun. But I realized as I was doing an interview with Jen Gray, who I had on our podcast a few weeks back, that I haven't got to share a lot of my story with you guys, a lot of what motivates me and some of the tips and tricks that I've come up with along the way. And I've I've learned from a lot of great people. So Jen had an awesome idea and I want to follow her example. She's rebroadcasting the interview that she played on here on her podcast channel. And I want to do the same with the one that I did on the Leading Liberty podcast a few weeks back. So today's podcast is actually an interview with me being interviewed by Jen. And I hope you guys will enjoy that. I get to share a little bit about my story and you'll get to hear a little bit from Jen as well in her capacity as an interviewer rather than the guest. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And I look forward to talking to you guys very, very soon, hopefully in a two-way communication means. I'll give one last thought before we start the podcast. We just launched a free course that helps check and see if you're prepared to run for office. It's a resource that I think consultants and candidates can use to help gauge how ready someone is to run. As well as if you're looking at running for office, you have the opportunity to go through this list of questions and watch the videos all for free and figure out if you're really ready to run. So we have it. It's a course that we offer through mycampaigncoach.com. There's a free sign up link right there on the home page that'll take you to the registration page and walk you through all about it. It's less than an hour to walk through the videos and you'll have the opportunity to ask yourself some questions that are absolutely critical to finding out whether you're ready to run. If you're not ready to run, it's going to show you exactly where you need to work between here and there to make sure you're ready to rock and roll when it comes to the campaign and get out there and win. So hope you guys will check that out. Now let's hear what I have to say on Jen's podcast. And really, it's, it's all about saving time because that's the one thing, that's the one finite resource that's not renewable on the campaign trail. You're listening to the Leading Liberty Podcast, where the rising stars of the freedom movement learn from the top minds in pro-liberty marketing, communication, and activism, what's working and not working right now, so you can do your cause the justice it deserves. And now your host, Jen Gray. Hey there, welcome back to the Leading Liberty Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Gray, and you are in for a treat if you have ever been a part of a political campaign in any capacity from block walker, volunteer to campaign manager, at least if your campaign experience has been anything like mine, then you've probably had some moments on the trail where you're thinking, oh my god, what is going on? And you're scrambling to make umpteen different things happen at once and stressed out because of it, and probably not even getting paid for whatever it is that you're doing. But then on the other hand, when you're plugged into a really self-motivated A-team, it's a super rewarding and exciting experience, especially when you realize that you can actually be more effective and less stressed out by taking some time on the front end to get organized, which is something that's definitely been on my mind lately as we try to onboard dozens of volunteers a week for Larry Sharp's campaign when there are hundreds more in the queue. And I remember being frustrated during Gary Johnson's campaign that, you know, I'd volunteered several times in several places and never heard anything back. So I ended up kind of going and doing my own thing for Gary. But now that I'm on the other side of it, 
I totally get it. And I'm actively pursuing a solution. Part of which is recognizing that there are a lot of people out there who know more about this than I do. And luckily, as I was starting to experience this challenge, I ended up reconnecting with a college friend of mine, Raz Schaefer, who has gone on to do some incredible things for liberty leaning candidates when it comes to campaign management and strategy and ground game, especially is his area of expertise. And I saw that he had a podcast called How to Run for Office. So we obviously had to talk about that and go on each other's shows. And he was so helpful and knowledgeable in this interview, the one you're about to hear right now, that when he mentioned that he did free consults for Liberty campaigns, I literally hung up and texted my media director that we needed to have a conversation with Raz as soon as possible about how to organize this Team Sharp volunteer army, especially, and create some systems that would kind of simplify this onboarding process and tasks and file sharing and all this fun stuff we're trying to figure out. So we did. And in the first five minutes of that call, Raz solved a problem for us that has been plaguing us for weeks. So Guy knows his stuff. He's been in the field for almost 10 years. And in addition to hosting the How to Run for Office podcast, he's also the founder of my campaign, MyCampaignCoach.com, where he has helped elect conservative candidates from City Hall to Congress by working with them largely one-on-one on clarifying their vision and their values and plugging that into kind of a communication strategy and systems that support it. And he's since gone on to build one of the best ground game softwares there is, Campaign Sidekick. And he's also packaged up pretty much his entire campaign brain in his Advanced Candidate Online course, which I've heard is the best in the business. And you guys know that I love me some online courses, but I can't personally vouch for this one just yet because I'm about to go through it myself. So I'll have to come back to this with a quick review and let you guys know how it goes. But moral of the story in the meantime is that Raz is the real deal, really smart guy with some awesome insights and ideas for us. So on that note, let's dive into the interview. Hey, Raz, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here with you today, Jen. Thanks for having me on. You bet. So how did you come to believe what you do about government, you know, and how has that shaped the course of your career so far? Well, you know, I got involved in politics very early on. Uh, my parents, when they were, my dad was a doctor and a minister. My mom homeschooled my two brothers and I, and I grew up in kind of a rural area of Texas. And so the first campaign that I ever worked on was a lady named Becky Farah, who was a friend of my parents, and she was running for state rep. And it was kind of at this time in Texas history, back in 96, I, I was 10 years old, and Texas was very much turning from blue to red. It, we had, you know, we had started getting uh, Republicans elected on the statewide level, but in a lot of the rural counties, it was still very, very regular for you to have a lot of down ballot Democrats that were elected, even in some fairly uh, conservative or, or liberty loving areas. And so Becky was running for state house, just an amazing woman. Uh, I'm friends with her to this day. She, she's just uh, truly incredible and has been a great mentor to me. But I was started knocking on doors in our neighborhood. My, my mom was pushing my youngest brother around the neighborhood in our stroller. And I was going up with palm cards and talking to these voters. I, I was pretty cute at 10 years old. I, I don't know what happened. But at the <laughs> time, I was, I was a pretty good proponent for, for going up there and talking to folks and saying, hey, go vote for my friend Becky Fair for state house. And I loved it, loved her. And uh, the crushing thing was we lost that race by 12 votes. Oh. And it, it, it was like 70 votes in election night, recount down to 12. And my, my, I don't remember this. I was 10, but my dad says he came in after we did the recount and uh, he found me crying on my bed and he said, Raz, what's wrong? And I, I said, dad, we, we lost. And so Raz, it seems like you kind of like this politics thing. Who knows what you can do with it in the future? <laughs> Little did he know. But at the end of the day, you're going to lose some. And I was like, I know dad, but we need 13 people who didn't vote for Becky. And the fact was, even at 10 years old, I understood that there's a difference between losing because you, you didn't have the juice, you didn't have the money, you didn't have the time. There are plenty of reasons you can run a good race and lose. But I knew that we had left something in reserve. We didn't leave it all out on the field like every coach always talks about. And so for me, I wanted to make sure I didn't feel that way again. And so every election I've been involved in since, and I've been involved in several, I've always want to make sure that in that window between the polls closing, early voting totals coming in, I can walk in the bathroom, wash my face, look myself in the eye in the mirror 
and know that I did everything I could and that win, lose, or draw, that we did a good race and that I worked hard. And so that, that's kind of been that, that kind of the, it really crystallizes that story, a lot of why I got involved. But uh, for me, I've always been a, a you know a conservative, liberty, liberty loving, libertarian leaning uh, person, kind of generally affiliated with the Republican Party, <laughs> although the Republican Party doesn't always affiliate with me. And uh, I think that you know the the kind of as I've crystallized my mission in in politics and kind of why I do what I do is I, I you know I say that my mission is to champion liberty by coaching campaigns, forging relationships, and earning votes. And I uh, I kind of break that out a little bit more and saying that you know I'm comprehensively conservative. I ride for the brand and believe that he who dares wins. And I think that it's uh, that's really important, especially in politics and working, whether you're Republican or Democrat or Libertarian or wherever you lean. I think the principle is so key to to why you do this. Uh, you and I both know plenty of people that are consultants or operatives or whatever they call themselves, that it, it truly is about the paycheck. Whatever they might say about principle or party, uh, it's it's they will, if you offer them a check, they'll take the job. And for me, I've always felt like that was a – uh, it was a pretty shallow motive. Uh, it was one that I could see myself getting trapped by. And so I've worked hard to make sure that as I, uh, as I structure my businesses and as I decided what clients I want to take, I wanted to always take people I believed in. And so as I, as I break down my, uh, you know, kind of what it means to be pre- comprehensively conservative in my mind, I, I basically said, you know, the, the things that I fight for that uh, I won't work for you if you don't fight for them too. It's life, individual liberty, religious liberty, fiscal responsibility, and limited government. I know it's just, you know, I like to be very upfront. They're on my website. You can go read them. These are the things that I believe in and that I'm going to fight for. And, you know, of course, you know, we went on from being 10 years old and helping Becky Ferrett to, you know, meeting you at Hillsdale College and to running across each other in the econ department. And, you know, I don't think you can sit through one of Gary Wolfram's classes in poly econ and not come away just, you know, more passionate about liberty and fighting for, for those uh, classical liberal principles. And so from there, I, I got more and more involved and, just been wearing different hats and trying to fight for and champion liberty everywhere I go ever since. I love that. And that, that is a true story about Gary Wolfram, by the way. That class was a game changer <laughs> for me. It's honestly He's probably, awesome. probably a huge part of the reason why we're even having this conversation right now. Oh, so yeah. Tell us about my campaign coach. You know, what are the some of the ways that you're helping candidates win now? Right. So, you know, my first job coming out of Hillsdale was I started doing candidate and activist training. Uh, with within you know, the Tea Party groups, Libertarian, Conservative, Republican, uh, different groups around the country, focused here in Texas, where I'm from, and the idea was that we wanted to help make people more effective, especially at that point when 2009 to 2012, as a whole lot of people were getting off the couch, were getting interested in activism and really trying to shape uh, their representation and what their politicians or elected representatives were doing. There was a lot of question about, okay, we're awake, we want to do something. But how do we make sure this is effective, not just cathartic? Because you can listen to Fox News or whatever your your favorite news show is or whoever, and you can yell at the TV and your blood pressure can skyrocket, and, but that doesn't do anything, right? There's no – it's not going to change anything, not a single opinion, not a single vote, nothing. And you, know, you can post to Facebook and be a chairborne warrior all day long, but if you're not being effective, if you're not communicating clearly and being articulate, then you're not going to move the needle much. And so you're just going to, you know, gin up your echo chamber as, as we see a lot on Facebook. And so, you know, I really built a passion for trying to help take people that, that were awake and that were interested and that loved liberty and say, okay, what are things you can do? How can we run better campaigns? How can you help candidates? Uh, and how, how can you make a difference there? And, and believing that uh, if we want to see the policy changes, we've got to win political battles. And so I wanted, I wanted to basically say, okay, my job is to help Good people get elected, help train them how to run better campaigns, and to make sure that they have well-trained activists at their disposal to, to be part of that battle. And so I got to start doing that. And I just discovered I loved it. And uh, my campaign coach, it's a long way to get around to what my campaign coach does. Uh, I, I started my campaign coach uh, about a year ago, a little bit over a year ago. And the idea was that I wanted to get back to that. I've spent a lot of time uh, doing different types of consulting, but mainly focused on ground game work. And I, I, as I've been running my own business for a couple of years, I was like, you know what? I really want to get back to that overt coaching, to the helping these candidates. Cause we got a lot of great people, liberty loving, conservatives and libertarians that run every cycle that we love, that are great people. And if we could snap our fingers and put them in office, they'd be rock stars, right? But we see them lose oftentimes because of simple rookie mistakes. And I'd like to see less of that happen. So, 
I got together with a buddy of mine, Andrew Kerr, and he's been helping me on this. He had worked with me doing candidate training before. And so we, we started building this idea of um, we're not consultants for coaches. And you know, consultants you hire, they basically do for you. Uh, either you're outsourcing labor, outsourcing a different function of the campaign. Uh, what we want to do is I actually feel like in some cases, candidates outsource too much. They outsource too much of the thinking, too much of what they should be doing, what the candidate's job role really is. They're outsourcing that. And so I want to make it easier for, for good candidates to do the right things and to make it easy. And so in, in my mind, a lot of that comes down to the, the preparation, the, the pre-preparation type. Before you pull the trigger, asking yourself simple questions, uh, putting together simple systems, and making sure that you have a good grasp on what you're actually getting yourself into. So basically through my campaign coach, we've done some live classes. We did, we beta, we have beta tested a live class uh, and we're going to be releasing that this next month through mycampaigncoach.com to where you can actually take it self-paced online. You can go there and buy that. It'll be there shortly here in a week or two, maybe around the time this podcast airs and you'll be able to go there and take that course. And we're actually also including some, uh, you know, twice a month we'll be doing live Q and A with any of the students that want to get on a live call with us. They'll be able to hop on and answer their questions live and chat, just talk about whatever they want to. I love that. And one of the things I really love about your business model too, you know, is that you're adding a ton of value for free up front so people can get to know you with things like the My Campaign Coach podcast. And you know, there's obviously so much that goes into running for office. I mean, to the point that a lot of candidates and activists, myself included, like don't even know what we don't know. So I mean, what kind of topics and tactics are you covering on your show? Well, the great thing about the podcast, and it's funny, I've, I've been hosting the podcast for a good six, eight months now. This is the first podcast that I've been on as a guest in that time. It's kind of ironic, but really the idea behind the podcast is that I love learning and I love learning more and more about politics and about campaigns. And I, I'm, I'm just smart enough to know that I don't know everything. And there are a lot of awesome, smart people like yourself and others out there that have so much to, to offer. And so both as an effort to to help me learn more as well as to help share that information with uh, the broader liberty loving public. I was like, Hey, why don't we start a podcast where we're talking to candidates, elected officials, uh, campaign operatives, staff, just people that know something about campaigns. And so what we do every week at the how to run for office podcast is I find people like you. We're going to be doing an interview with you shortly as well. And we talk about your experience. We talk about uh, your specialties, uh, typically, I'll have a list of questions depending on your background that help us really dive into your expertise and find some of those key assets that in, in bits of knowledge you have and, and some of the worst stories that kind of help illuminate those and share them with the, the broader public. It, it's basically, you know, you and me are sitting down having a drink, talking politics and just kind of talking shop and the whole World Wide Web gets to listen in and, and see what kind of nuggets they can glean from that. I love that. And, you know, speaking of the free value you're adding up front, you also have a free cheat sheet. You all know I love me some free cheat sheets. Uh, so <laughs> I will definitely link this one up for everyone in the show notes because it's a good one. You've got a great one on the 10 essential, the 10 essential questions to campaign success. So give us, give us a teaser. Give us one. Which one is the most important? Well, I'll tell you, I, I do love having that free value up front because campaigns are expensive and, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of people out there that, that do different types of campaign consulting. So I like to, to give away as much as possible. And, uh, you know, we got several cheat sheets. We're actually coming out with another one with some really good questions to ask yourself before you run for office that really help you with that, with, uh, the preparing in your exploratory phase. But that 10 questions, uh, that really are going to be essential to your campaign success. Well, we have it on there and, uh, I appreciate sharing that. Um, there's some good ones on there. I won't, uh, I won't you know, cheat by, uh, or give it away too much by giving them all. But the, the last question is it asks what mediums will be most effective to delivering your message. And I think that's, that's got a couple of different meetings and a couple of ways you ask yourself that question. Uh, one is when it applies to, you know, social media, direct mail, uh, door to door, those types of things. But I think really what I like to, the biggest part of it that I like to look at is searching for an asymmetrical advantage that your campaign has that your opponents don't. And I think in a lot of cases, when we look at campaigns, especially when we're, we don't have the budget, we, we know we're not going to win the air war. We're not going to be the guy with TV, you know, 30 second TV ads, every commercial break. That's not going to be us. We're not going to be the ones dropping 30 pieces of direct mail. That That's not how... Uh, the, the type of people that I work with, you work with, we don't have that kind of money in a lot of cases. And, and thankfully, we also know there's much better ways to spend it. Truth. But what I like to do is I like to say, look, what are the, what are the strengths of, of my opponent and what are the strengths that we've got? In a lot of cases, that's grassroots fervor. That's a genuine uh, personality and a character that's able to connect 
personally with these voters. And so in a lot of cases for me, uh, I see social media and uh, door-to-door efforts, real ground game, traditional ground game canvassing as some of those major things that I look for. But those can be different by campaign. Sometimes it can be affected by your budget as far as which one of those areas you have a strong advantage that your opponent doesn't. Uh, and so you got to do a really good inventory of where you're strong, where you're weak, where they're strong and where they're weak to really identify what medium is going to be best. And, and you obviously want to drive depth on those because that's going to be where you shine. And so you want to make sure that you you do everything possible to excel in those mediums and own them. I love that. I think that's so important for people to realize that you don't have to be amazing at every single opportunity. Just like, you know, pick a lane, maybe two, and be amazing at those things that you have a strategic advantage on. I love, I love that perspective. And absolutely right. Speaking of important questions to ask, you know, part of what you help your one on one clients develop, and this is so critical, are the three whys to help develop their core messaging. So, what are they and why do the whys matter? <laughs> so why questions are great because they're they're open-ended. You know, they're the type of question you have a test that you can go on for pages on and you often should. So let me give a little bit of context for a lot of these questions that, that we encourage folks to ask before they're running for office. It comes down to basically the way I tell folks, get you block at least an hour at a time. And, and this may take one hour, it may take several, but block at least an hour Turn off your phone, make it undistracted time. It can be away from everybody else. It can be in a coffee shop. Whatever your best environment is for, for cogitation and writing, pick that one. Uh, if you got to turn on some music, turn some on. If you got to pour yourself a drink, coffee or something stronger, go for it. But set an ideal environment for undistracted thought and really some deep introspection. And the three why questions, it's, it's why me? So why am I the guy or the girl? Why, why now? So what is it unique about this point in time, this moment, this election cycle that is making me run now? Why didn't I run two years ago or two years from now? And then why this office? Uh, what is it about this office, just the piece or dog catch your congressional office or governor? What is it about this specific office that compels me to run and why am I qualified for it? So that why me, why now, why this office that really crystallizes a lot. And part of the importance of that is, is you're going to start out during that hour uh, with a lot of especially verbal vomit. You're just going to be putting words on a page. And, and it's important you don't turn on any kind of filter. You, you make sure you blank those out because you want to get everything down on paper. And it's going to be the job of a future session or working with your campaign and your team to really crystallize those down into your, your elevator pitch and your five-minute stump speech and those types of things. But you're putting down what's really going to be the focus of that. All that stuff's going to be important. So as you do that, you make sure it's unfiltered, and then later on you'll crystallize that down. But every person you talk to during the campaign, you are answering those three questions. Whether it's intentionally or not, those are the three questions that they're asking, even if they don't know it. Why you? Why, you know, why are you running now? And why in the world should I think you're qualified or vote for you for this office? And so if, if you're not answering those questions, every time you open your mouth on the campaign show, you're losing opportunities and failing. And it's, it's really most questions that a reporter asks you, if, unless it's issue specific, th- that's what you need to answer with. It may be, you may be, uh, you're tweaking it a little bit to ba- for whatever their specific question is, but nearly every time a reporter asks you a question or a voter asks you a question, those are things they want to hear. And that's what they need to hear in order for you to secure their support and vote. I love that. Yes, yes, and yes to all, <laughs> to all of the above. And I think you kind of, captured why it's so important to work with someone like yourself and in, in, and in capturing all of that unfiltered stuff that comes out. You know, when, when I'm sitting down with a candidate, sometimes I'll, I'll just let them talk for like an hour and they'll, there'll be certain little nuggets in there that I'm like, yep, that, that thing they right. just said. And that's what you really do best. I feel like, you know, with, with your messaging and the way that you're able to add value to people is, is to catch them unfiltered and help them really extract that why because sometimes you know when we're when we're talking about ourselves we're we're so d- deep in the forest that we can't really see the trees that are going to resonate with other people but that's so that's so important so i'm glad you brought that up and i'd love to kind of shift gears a little bit and talk about some tactical stuff because i mean you're an expert at running a ground game especially which is something i know very little about and something we really haven't covered in this show for that exact reason so what would you say is the biggest ground game mistake you see the freedom movement making right now and you know what should we be doing instead well, let me step back for just a half second here and, and talk a little bit about just kind of what ground game is. And that's essentially any type of voter contact you're doing person to person. And it typically occurs at their door or on the phone. And you know, when you can look at 
uh, any scientific study of different means of voter contact. And, and you see that the, the gold standard is still door to door. It involves you looking somebody in the eye, shaking their hand, asking for their support and sharing information about why you got off your couch, why you're at their front door talking about some crazy candidate. And so that's you, know, you can look at all kinds of vote, uh, books. Uh, Green and Gerber are two of the two professors that have done incredible research. And their book, you just uh, get out the vote, is, is is kind of the Bible of ground game. And I talk, they did a lot of surveys and studies looking at the effectiveness of that. And so you know, I'm a huge proponent from when I was 10 years old till today of knocking doors. It's something that the candidate needs to do, that the family, the supporters, the staff, uh, everybody you can needs to get out there and knock doors. And you obviously need to, to target that having good software. Uh, having good, uh, you know, you figure out your your ideal voter contact and and really then what you're going to say. And so I think the biggest mistake a lot of folks make is on really what they have to communicate. And so what, what a lot of campaigns do is they will, uh, you know, if they're asking me to help with the ground game or something like that, is they'll say, okay, Raz, here's the script that we're going to use. Here's the the entry. Hi, my name is Raz. I'm here with candidate X. We love Liberty. Uh, you know, he's running this election. Yada, yada, that they have the intro, they have a couple of questions, ask for the folks support, and then the exit stays left. Well, that that's great. But but they when they're training their volunteers and they're getting out there, they they believe that they could be affected by having folks stick to that script. And that doesn't happen. <laughs> everybody, everybody knows that very few people talk about it. But the fact is that when you're going door to door, your script is a starting point. And so it, just giving a script to your the folks that are doing your ground game, your block walking for you is not nearly enough. You need to give them the script because that lets them know what you ideally want them to communicate in your words. Uh, and that's good because that's a good starting point is they make that their own. Two, you need to make sure they know the the top three to five things that you want them to leave behind when they leave that door. So typically, uh, that's going to be someone on the lines of one, that it was a positive interaction that's associated with your candidate's name, uh, that you have a certain issue or issue set, some kind of bullet point that you want them to, the person to be further educated on. You know, they're running. They're a conservative libertarian. They're supporting these couple things uh, and that they're they're listening. So I have to ask an issue question at some point during the survey to help understand and, and let the person know that we care what they think. And it also, of course, helps us to pivot the conversation and, and ideally address what they most care about. So you want to leave it behind a couple, you know, three to five things, but you want to let the voter or the, or the volunteer or staff member know, you know, the script is great, but if you could only leave five nuggets behind, these are the five. Next, you want to make sure that you know exactly what you want them to bring back. So this this is primarily a data issue, right? So what are the data points? So a lot of surveys and software, like the ones that I use, uh, Campaign Sidekick, you, know, you have the option of collecting a lot of different questions and you get emails and long form notes and tags and all kinds of stuff. And, and you can have it, it, you can definitely have too many questions, but you at least want to know if I can only ask three questions or, or get a couple of responses back from this voter, what do I want to get? And so typically that's going to be something like, you know, what keeps them up at night or what their most important issue is. Uh, ideally, an email address is always wonderful, as you know, um, being able to you know get some kind of sense of where they stand as far as potential support. And that changes based on what part of the election cycle is or if they're previously ID'd or not. Uh, you definitely want to get some sense of of their support level, and then look for the uh, look for other things that uh, maybe there's a bumper like a PTA bumper sticker on their car, or a NRA sticker, or a uh, you know some other sticker or sign or flag or you know veterans uh, license plate on the car. So, you know, different things about them that might help personalize that contact. So you got to let them know, hey, these are the couple things out of all that. Here are the most important ones that we want to bring back. And so by letting them know, here's the script. Here's what we want you to leave behind. Here's what you to bring back. And then fourth, what do you not want to, what do we not want you to talk about? So, you know, there would be different issues that you don't want to, there'd be specific things you don't want to say, or you don't want to bring up. You'd rather just leave out of the conversation. And so they need to know those as well. So if, if you do those four things, make, give them the script, what you want to leave behind, what you want to bring back and what you want to stay away from, that's going to let that volunteer that or that supporter as they're going door to door to really make this their own and make it a true conversation rather than some robotic, you know, interaction. I love that. That was such a huge value drop right there. And I want to back up to something, uh, something you mentioned there talking about the software, because I'm all about the software. I'm all about the tools. Give me the tools. Make it easier for me. So um, tell us about Campaign Sidekick. You know, what is it? How does it work? And how does it help a campaign? Yeah, so that's one of the other companies I'm involved in and a part owner of. Uh, Campaign Sidekick 
Vote is the website for it. And what we do is about five years ago, myself and one of my former bosses, uh, we've been looking for a software platform that we could use for voter contact, door to door and phone banks. And we really we couldn't find any out there. And we definitely couldn't find any out there that we liked or trusted. And I think that even today's world of data and stuff like that, I think that trust is still a key factor. You got to trust that somebody's going to do you right. They're going to keep your data safe. And uh, you know, that they kind of believe the same things you do. And so I, I, we wanted to have a, a trusted source for voter contact platform. And so basically we wanted to do two things. We wanted to be able to knock doors and call voters. And we believe that core, you know, establishing those as our as best in breed core competencies was key. And so that's what we started doing. And uh, well, I didn't have any background in technology. We started working with programmers and I knew what it was like to block walk. I knew what I wanted it to look like and the functions I wanted to have. But, uh, but I didn't know how to go to signal line. So we got the right people. We built the right team. And we've uh, we've really established a strong reputation for being a, a strong platform that allows folks to, uh, you know, to identify their voters and to communicate with them. And, and one of the cool things is that once you get that data back or if you have third party or old data you're able to use, you get to leverage that with being able to have that pop up when I'm going to talk to you, come to your house and I know – you're, you're a Libertarian Party member and you love all these things or these are the things to stay away from in the conversation. I can you – know, all the notes and tags and information I have about you, I can have that popping up for the volunteers so that our conversation isn't a cold start. I get to put my best foot forward. And then on the campaign management side, I can monitor and track every single thing down to where you're standing, where you, when you enter the data, uh, which is especially important for any kind of paid staff or paid block walkers. And being able to, to help give you coaching advice on how to potentially get better as I'm watching your data and figuring out areas that you might need to improve. But soup to nuts, it's really a great solution for if you're knocking doors, making phone calls. I'm a big fan and, and I'd love to talk to anybody about it that needs some help there. I love that. And I love that you do free consultations for people on that too. So I will definitely link that opportunity up for people in the show notes because I hope they will take advantage of that opportunity to pick your brain. And I love that you just touched on the, you know, the volunteer organizing side too, because, you know, one of the things that I've come to realize in the past year, especially and even in the past week, <laughs> most of all is, you know, the logistical challenges that go into organizing a campaign, you know, and, and, you know, the bigger the campaign, the more complex it gets. So what are some of the systems that campaigns can put in place to kind of mitigate some of those challenges? So I think as you're building out your campaign, you're going to identify you know, some of those those mediums that you need to have to communicate, right? And that's going to help give you an idea of where you need to have stronger systems. And really, I like to think about you know, whether it's in my business or in a campaign, uh, if I'm doing something, is this the last time that I have to do it? If I'm writing an email and this is the last time I can write this email and I can make it a really good one that I can maybe uh, add a, you know, tweak a little bit of text every time I send it out. Um, I can do that. And I'm going to write it really, really good. And I'm going to spend a lot of time on the first time and then I'll be able to repurpose it. So I'm a big fan of building templates. And so, you know, for instance, with you talking about volunteers, there are a lot of things that when you're, if you're organizing like a weekend block walking effort and you're bringing in volunteers on a Saturday for, for going out and knocking doors, you know, you're going to be doing that every single weekend. So why make everything back up from scratch every week? But that's going to waste your time, make you have headaches, and is just eventually going to wear you out. Yes. And so, you know, a couple of quick examples is one, uh, you need to have a Walker briefing sheet that's going to have you know some of those main things. You need to have the script. You need to have uh, you know answers to commonly asked questions. You need to have you know, maybe your contact information for the next event where people go to sign up. Your website, your social media information. Um, you know, all those four things that we talked about as far as the the script and what they need to bring back, what they need to leave behind, and, and things to stay away from. Um, and you'll have information about news clippings, those kind of things, but just write out a quick process. So, you know, what are the steps to this? And then every weekend you just have every Friday night, you just go back through that and you copy and paste from three or four different areas and boom, there it is. Uh, it can be, if you need to have an email to volunteers that you you know, every week you're going to send out another one, you know, trying to get people signed up for the next super Saturday block walk. Well, don't write that sucker from scratch every time, write it out, figure out here are the area, the blocks that I've got to write custom. Here, you know, have your links already in there for sign up, all that stuff, and and just save yourself some time. But you know, the reason a lot of campaigns don't do those things is because it's really the tail wagging the dog. It's because they don't do enough preparation, and so that's something that we really drive heavily during our campaign coaching, both the the individual, the one on one, as well as through our courses. Is you're saying, look, let's let's really break things down into manageable segments, and let's say, hey, what are all the things we can do before we ever say go, before we ever announce? And what are the things we can think through then in the, in, in just in the, with the lack of chaos 
that you have before, kind of the calm before the storm, what can we think out? And there, there's a remarkable number of areas from you know, just simple things like, hey, um, how often do I need to order, uh, do, do I need to check inventory on palm cards? I, I mean, I, that was one, of, I, I did, I had one client and his wife was talking and she was like, Raz, that was the one thing that, or the, the biggest thing helped for me out of the whole course. I was like, okay, well, I, I feel like that probably doesn't say great things about my course. She's like, no, no. She's like, no, no, no. She's like, I love the course. There were a lot of great stuff. But like for me, she, she said, part of my job on the campaign was making sure that we had all the materials and that we never had to pay for a rush printing job or shipping job because we were behind. And you know, finding a campaign that hasn't had to do a rush ship, a rush printing and shipping job on palm cards because they were out. It's Thursday night. They're block walking on Saturday morning. I, I mean, th- most campaigns have had to do that. But she was like, we were able to save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars because I was always on top of it. I had a, I simply added a recurring event on my calendar every single week, check inventory. And if they didn't have a, you know, she would ask her husband, the candidate, hey, how many doors are we knocking this next week? He'd tell her. She's like, okay, well, we don't have enough. So, you know, she was doing that two weeks in advance, playing it out. And so she never, she never ran out of lit, never ran out of yard signs, never ran out of any collateral. She never had to pay a single rush, you know, shipping or processing charge. And she's like, so, so simple things like that. And, and a lot of those are things that first time candidates it will never occur to them uh, or it never occur to them to ask, you know, go through. And as they're talking to vendors before the campaign starts, ask them, hey, what are your what are your pricing variables? You know, how much, you know, what, at what kind of lead time do you need before we get into rush charges? Um, what is your, you know, from your location, what's what's a, a comfortable shipping time frame? Like, when do I need to have this? Uh, some of those questions. That, and so we try to help you know, find those simple things in a lot of areas that are going to provide large value to campaigns, either in uh, you know money saved or votes gained. And, you know, as well as the, the bigger strategic portions, helping them craft those messages. But there's you can take pretty much any area of the campaign. And we've we identified basically five major systems we try to break campaigns down into. That's finance, logistics, air, ground and strategy. And so within each of those, we identify the the subsystems or the processes and then we try to say, okay, what within these can we systematize? And really, it's, it's all about saving time because that's the one thing, that's the one finite resource that's not renewable on the campaign trail. Truth. Dollars, you can raise more. Volunteers, you can recruit more. Hopefully you are if you're doing a good job. But you know, time is that third variable thing that you have that you can't renew. And so you got to be very judicious with that. And finding simple ways to save time is, is one of my favorite things to do on campaigns. I... Absolutely love that. And that's all such great advice. And that, that would not have occurred to me at all. Like any, any of the, all those systems that you just mentioned with ground game would have not even been on my radar. So that's such awesome advice. I know we have a lot of candidates or aspiring candidates who listen to this show. So I hope that they are like as excited about that little knowledge bomb as I am right now. And you touched on something else there that I wanted to circle back to, you know, in something else that I love about your business models, you know, the fact that you've worked online courses into there so that people can basically get more affordable access to your brain on demand with a lower marginal cost on your end in terms of distributing it. So tell us about that. You know, what is the advanced candidate course? What's in it? Who's it for? So it's really been kind of an evolution on my end, uh, just the business model and the courses we offer. And, and big picture, we want to offer a, a number of courses, uh, both the the general and the specialized over the next year. So we'll have stuff from the advanced candidate course, uh, which is really for a first time candidate, especially, but also for somebody maybe to run and they're looking to run for higher office or like, you know what, we won. Last time, but we're gonna be up against a tougher challenge, or maybe maybe it wasn't you know all that hard last time, but it's gonna be tougher this time. We want to be better prepared and and have things really all of our ducks in a row. And so we want to provide a course there that is gonna take them through from the beginning to the end, from answering those why questions and looking at their motivations, uh, you know, doing some you know some SWOT analysis, figuring out you know where are we and how can we win this thing, building their campaign plan all the way to their budget to identify those mediums that they need to be focused in and figure out how to build those processes, identifying what they are. So taking each of those five areas, finance, logistics, air ground, and strategy, and really dive deep into those and show them how to build a ground game, what's important, how do we identify which voters we need to talk to, uh, how do we, you know, what are strategies for, you know, getting the most email addresses, getting the most responses, those kind of things. And so we want to do that. And, and really last fall, we developed the course and we did it live. And, uh, you know, I really thought initially that the live component was going to be critical. I was like, you know, and maybe it was a little bit of just conceit on my part, but I felt like from say sales perspective that having that live interaction access would be critical. 
But what I found was, as we did the course, was that for one, it's really, really hard to get any number of people that are busy professionals that are you know, candidate quality folks together on the same call once a week. So like that, that's just not really realistic. But two, I wanted to be able to, you know, I realized that most of what we were doing was not the Q&A side. It was you know, more of a lecture. I, I was going through and helping lay stuff out. Because a lot of the stuff we were talking about, because they hadn't considered it before, they didn't have good questions and they didn't really know what they needed to be uh, asking. And so they needed, took a little bit of time after the lecture and then they come back with questions and answer. So I was like, you know, how can we save folks money and how can I save myself time? And so like, you know what, we're going to create some online courses. And so we're actually, this next month we're rolling out, uh, we're at, you know, the, the first time through we're going to roll it out week by week, new modules every week, going through each of those five major systems. And allowing folks to go and take those online self-paced. We're going to have some, some pretty steep discounts on this first round as well. Let's get some folks in there and get some uh, get some feedback. And we'll be having, in addition to the the, the self-paced course side, twice a month we'll be doing Q&A live with myself and probably some a couple other folks on there to answer questions. And really just want to make it as easy as possible for good people to build better campaigns. I love that. And I, lo- and I love that you have that perspective of making it easier for people to have to get the most value out of their one-on-one time with you. So they can, they can have gone through the, the basics and then anything that's tailored, you know, custom to their campaign, whether it's, you know, extracting certain key points of messaging or a challenge that's unique to their specific campaign that they can then work through those things with you one-on-one. So I, I love that. I think that's, that's so smart and such a great way to add value. So I will definitely be linking that up in the show notes for everybody also. And I would love to know, I mean, you've been involved in so many different campaigns, done so many cool things at this point. So what would you say is your most memorable freedom movement moment where you really felt like something you did made a huge difference in the outcome? Well, it, it is kind of tough to filter those down, but, but one stands out there's a, and this is actually, this is not purely just pandering to the, to libertarian audience, but it, but it happens to fit quite well. So there's, there's a guy named Jonathan Stickland. He's a state rep and been in here in, in Texas for a number of years and a very, very liberty minded, liberty loving guy was, I think Ron and Rand Paul and, you know, endorsed him. Uh, you know, during his first run and, and just a very strong guy. He, he's the, he's a guy that pushing constitutional carry and, and really just the guy is a Liberty loving son of a gun. And he, uh, back in 2010, I believe it was, um, a friend of mine that was a tea party leader called me and said, Hey, there's this guy, he's looking at running, uh, he's running against this entrenched incumbent, very establishment, um, you know, not a very conservative or Liberty loving guy. I uh, look to run against him and, um, I, I love for you to meet with him and just kind of feel him out. And, and see if he's serious about it and just kind of let me know what you think. And so I went and I sat down with Jonathan and we, we hung out for probably an hour or two. And I, I immediately just you know really liked the guy. But one of the first things I do a lot of times when I sit down with candidates is I try to scare him out of it. Uh, because it was like, number one, if I can scare you out of running by just a little bit of reality check, you, you're not going to survive the campaign. And two, there's going to be some point during the campaign where you're going to look at me like, why the hell did you let me do this? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to be able to say, hey, dude, this is your idea. I try to talk you out of it. And so I, I really tried to kind of talk, talk him out of it. And, uh, he was, he was indomitable. He was, he was like, Raz, this is, this, somebody's got to do it. And there's nobody else crazy enough to run against this guy. And so it's me. And, and I say, you know, Jonathan, you know, why are you doing this? And in the day, like, what's your reason? You know, pulled up his phone and showed me a picture of his two little girls and said, Raz, uh, I want, I want to have a better Texas and a stronger country, a more liberty loving uh, place to, to raise my family and for my girls to have a better state than I did. And, I was like, man, I can't argue with that. So, you know, I went out there and, and set to work trying to help him and try to get him plugged in with the right folks. And, uh, you know, he he won his race um, and was has just been a rock star. And the guy, you know, there are different legislators play different roles, right? It's just like in a football team. You got some place people play D line, some are this, you know, O line, some throw the ball and some catch it. And Jonathan is the designated bomb thrower in the Texas legislature. The guy is there to to push issues that other folks are afraid to push. And stand out. He's been consistently rated as one of the most conservative. Uh, he's, he's, I think he's been rated the most conservative for the last, you know, every session that he's been in there, and uh, on a conservative to liberal scale, and by by basically every scorecard as well as you know, Rice University, one of the, the universities that does some rankings here in Texas. In the last two years, he's actually has tied with a couple other guys, which was kind of uh, <laughs> which kind of burned his butt a little bit. But he's just he's a great guy, and and getting to have been part of his campaign, you know, in every one sense has been a been a true pleasure. 
That is so awesome. Well, this has been such an awesome, valuable conversation. Where is the best place to learn more about you and your work? So the first place you need to go is mycampaigncoach.com. And that's where, you know, through our website, you've got the ability to uh, request us to come speak. You know, myself or Andrew, I say, hey, we want you to come speak at an event or do a live training course with some folks. You can schedule one-on-one consultation with me. There's a button you can pull up my schedule and pick a time, whatever works best for you. And we'll sit down for half an hour on a video call and talk about where you're at, what you're doing, how we can help. Um, you know, that's kind of the first step, you know, really, if you want to think about one-on-one coaching or if you're interested in learning more about our, our courses and the, the stuff we're going to be rolling out, that's a great place. And then we also have a link for you to go ahead and go over to our online courses side. And so, uh, I'm not sure when this podcast will go live, but in early August, we'll have the ability for you to go ahead and, and purchase. Actually, it'll probably go live, uh, about the, the 20th or so of July. So, um, you will, you'll be able to hop on there and purchase the course. The first, um, the first actual modules for you to take will start dropping in early August. And, uh, yeah, we would love to, to reach out to you guys and find out more. We got our own podcast, the how to run for office podcast. You can subscribe to through there and check us out. And, uh, I guess there's some, a couple other ways you can go to Facebook, look at my campaign coach on there or, uh, look myself up Raz Schaefer or my campaign coach on Twitter. I'm active everywhere and would just uh, love talking to liberty loving folks and seeing how we can help move, push the movement forward awesome raz well thank you so much for everything you're doing for the cause for all the ways that you've really gone out of your way to simplify what i know can be a very overwhelming stressful process you are a rock star at what you do and we just appreciate your effort and your time so much so thanks again so much for coming on the show it's my pleasure it's my passion as well and thank you jen for doing the podcast and helping promote liberty you bet Well, that's a wrap, guys. Thank you all very much for hanging in there through the podcast and for listening to a little bit of my story and some of the important tips that I think candidates and campaigns need to take into account as they're preparing to run for office and heating it up on the campaign trail. We mentioned the advanced candidate course. That's actually live now. This podcast was recorded a few weeks back. It's this live. We've already got people in there taking it. And you have the opportunity by going to mycampaigncoach.com right now to actually get 50% off when you sign up. We walk through 12 modules that break down the five primary systems of your campaign, helping you plan that out and prepare yourself to win by building a lot of those systems that Jen and I talked about on the podcast. We've also got a free course on there that helps assess the question, are you prepared to run for office? That's really the first question you need to ask yourself, and there's a lot that goes into it. So I build out a free one-hour course, one-hour videos of me, Kelvin, talking through those questions, why they're important, how to answer them, and then how to leverage the answers, whether it's a yes or a no to make sure that your campaign is moving forward and that you're able to get the right setup and have the right systems in place to help you win. So I hope you guys checked it out. We've had some great reviews on that already, and it's a great free course. We'll talk to you guys again next week. Please subscribe and rate us on iTunes to help spread the word. We'll be back with you next week with more campaign insights from My Campaign Coach.